Father, we come to be present in this moment. Meet us as you already are. You met us in worship. You met us, Lord God, uh, in, in giving, Lord God. You've met us in our generosity. You've met us, Lord God, just in, in the melodies that have played and touched our hearts. Now, Lord God, speak through your word. I thank you, Lord God. I know you've got a word for your people, Lord God. So I'm praying that chains would be broken. I'm praying that eyes would be opened, that hearts would be healed. I'm praying, Lord God, for the brother that's tuned in that didn't plan on watching today, but somehow he found it online. I'm praying, Lord God, for the sister that's going through a trial and, and needs a word from you. I'm praying for somebody who wants this year to be a banner year to be a different year Lord God I believe you're going to do it and so we trust you Lord God we trust you right now in the name of Jesus have your way oh great God that you are get all the glory get all the glory in Jesus name in Jesus name amen 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 yeah hallelujah hallelujah uh, it's good to be in your presence today, family, wherever you are in your living room. Maybe you're still in your bed. Maybe you still got a do-rag on. It's all good because uh, we can come to worship God uh, in any way, any form and fashion. He's concerned about the posture of our hearts. Amen. And so I I'm excited that you're here. I got a word, God. I'm hype. I ain't even going to lie. I, I, I jumped up this morning early ready. I got a word that God has been working with me on. And really, you know how it is. Uh, God, God really has got to work on my heart that I might be able to deliver something that touches yours. And so I'm trusting God to meet us on today. Uh, last week, we began uh, talking about our theme for 2022, One Accord, that we desire to be on one accord with God, one accord with ourselves, and one accord with each other. And I believe this is the year. This is the year of one accord. God's going to do it. He's going to bless your family. He's going to bless your finances. He's going to bless your marriage. He's going to bless your ministry as we get on one accord in the name of Jesus. So uh, today I, I got a message I want to preach to you in that vein. Uh, and this is what the Lord gave to me. He gave this title to me and I'm giving it to you. This year will be different. This year, this year will be different. I know, I know you've said it before. I know you've thought it before, but I believe this is a divine word. I believe this is a prophetic word for somebody declaring this year, this year is going to be different. God's going to do something in this year that I've never seen him do before. And I'm going to posture myself. I'm going to position myself to receive, to walk by faith and trust God in a new way. This year will be different. I put that little hashtag on that thing, one more year, one more year. You'll, you'll see why uh, when we get to the text. One more year uh, is what God uh, is, is speaking over us, I believe. And this year will be different. Somebody put that, put that thing in the chat for me. Put it in the chat. This year will be different. If you're around somebody, tell them. Look at them and tell them this year will be different. If you're by yourself, tell yourself this year will be different. Do me a favor and tag somebody. Share this link on Facebook on YouTube, wherever you are, that they might get what God has for them today. We're not going to be selfish with the word. Amen. Uh, we're going we're gonna to share it so somebody else can get what God has for them. This year will be different. Which team are you on? Are you on team no New Year's resolutions? I don't believe in that. I don't operate on resolutions or, or, or you on team, I already made my resolution. I shared it with my friends. I got a vision board posted with it in my house already. We already had the vision board party. Uh, which, which team are you on? I, I'm sure that, that of those watching online today, there are many different thoughts and philosophies. But, but here's what I know, that at the beginning of the year, most of us are thinking about what am I going to do different this year? Well, what's going to make this year a little bit different or a lot different than the years that I've already experienced? And regardless of which team you're on, 
Here's what I believe. I believe that resolutions can work, but most of us don't resolve. <laughs> Ooh, I need y'all to hear that thing. I believe resolutions can work. Not necessarily, oh, this is my New Year's resolution and this is what I'm going to do. Because part of what we're doing there is really we're making a wish. We're not resolving. A lot of us, uh, many people have done a Daniel fast. Anybody ever done a, a Daniel fast? And, and, and you've, you've done that because somebody resolved. In Daniel chapter 1, the Bible says that Daniel resolved not to eat from the king's table. He made a resolution. He said, he said, only give me fruits and vegetables. That's how I'm rolling. And because he resolved, to resolve means to decide firmly on a course of action. You see, oftentimes our, our New Year's resolutions are wishes of what sounds good, but a resolution is I made up my mind that it's time for something different. When I really resolve, things change. When I really resolve, I shift my attitude. When I really resolve, my family looks different. When I really resolve, my finances get in order. And I believe that resolutions are necessary if we're going to trust the Lord. Somebody, somebody's going to resolve. No, you're not just going to write down something on a piece of paper and say, oh, this would be nice, but somebody's going to do something different this year. It's a new year. And I believe that even in the way that God has designed the world, there is a push toward the people of God walking in our destiny. God has designed the world that we have new days, we have new mornings. You get up and you have a, a new morning, and, and then we have seasons. He designed the world that there are seasons, fall and, and winter and summer and spring. And then we have what we call new years. And I believe that God designed it in that way so that we would be pushed toward our destinies and make a shift to do something different with the new moment that he gives us. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. This thing is for somebody today. Whether you follow a Roman calendar, a Jewish calendar, a Chinese calendar, whatever calendar you follow, there is something significant about a new day, a new season, and a new year. Something that makes you pause and say, what am I going to reorganize this year? Well, what am I going to get done? Somebody said, you know what, this year I'm going to get the garage cleaned out. This year I'm going to clean out that room that has become the hoarding closet. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me, but I'm going to clean that thing out this year. This is the year, right? There's something about the new year that made you say, I'm going to make this purchase. I'm going to put this money aside to make this purchase this year. And part of what I heard the Lord saying, I shared with you all on last week, that this is the year of one accord. I'm going to be on one accord with the Lord, one accord with myself, one accord with others. And in order to do that, I got to do some things differently. Hear me here. What I will do differently is not just about what I'm going to do in my own strength, but it's also about what kind of room I make for Jesus to do something in me and through me. You see, part of what we are called to do differently, family, is allow the Lord the room to impact our lives. There's a story that, that the Lord led me to uh, in, in preparation for this word in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. If you got a Bible, you can read it there. It's going to pull up on your screen wherever you are. I'm just going to read this story. Short couple of verses. Luke 13, chapter, Luke 13 uh, verses 6 through 9. It's a, a parable that Jesus is telling, and this is what it says. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard or his garden, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I ain't even found none. Then he says, cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? 
Listen, listen to what, what the, the gardener or the caretaker says. He says, sir, leave it alone for one more year. Whoo! Somebody type that thing in right there. One, one more year. Sir, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, good. If not, then cut it down. This, this story, man, this story blesses my life, and I, I believe it's going it's to bless somebody else uh, on today. You see, the Lord led me to this passage because the caretaker says, give it one more year. And while others may be ready to give up on you, or while you might even be ready to give up on yourself, I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody watching at the end of 2021, you were ready to throw in the towel on yourself. You were ready to give up on yourself. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm giving you another year. I'm giving you another chance. I, I got something special in store for you. There is a new season, a new moment, a new year, and I came to get somebody excited today about January, about a new year, about a new opportunity to trust in God. Because there is an extension of time. The, the caretaker says, let's extend the time. Let, let's give it one more year. But, but the extension of time by itself won't be the difference maker. It's going to be what you do with the extension. I remember, y'all. I remember I was, I was in college, and, and in college, I, I, was, I was behind on, on some assignments. I was behind on some things I, I needed to get done for a class. And, and some professors in college, they didn't care what else you had going on. They said, the paper's due on the 15th. You don't get it in on the 15th then you're going to get uh, docked every day late. Whatever you got going on, that's on you. I'll let you know in the syllabus when the paper was due. But then, then there were some other professors. Ooh, somebody ought to give God praise right there. There were some other professors who, who you would come to and, and you would say, this is what's going on. And, and they would say, I'll give you an extension. Ooh, that was like a visitation from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Ghost just came down and visited with you when the professor said, I'll give you an extension. Have it, have it to me on Monday. Have it to me next week. It was like grace just came and met you. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm giving you an extension. I'm giving you an opportunity to turn a failure into an A. I'm giving you an opportunity to turn a withdrawal into a graduation. I'm giving you an opportunity as I'm extending the time. What will you do with the moment that I give you? What will you do with the time that I open up? God says somebody here, there's great blessing for you in this year, but it's connected to how you respond to the extension from God Almighty. Is there anybody here that will give God a little bit of praise for extensions, that will give God a little bit of praise for a new season, a new moment, for God saying, if you're not dead, you're not done, I've still got time, I've still got blessings. I've still got opportunities. I still got doors you haven't even gotten to yet. Woo! Do you know, do you know that there are doors with your name on it that you haven't even seen yet? There, there are some doors in May that got your name on it. There's some doors in November that have your name on it, and God is saying, I've extended their time. You see, family, because everybody didn't make it to 2022. Whew, as hard as, it, as that is for us to wrestle with. God, God was saying that, that, that their time on this earth was, was complete. Their assignment may have been complete. But for you who are still here and listening, God says, I've got some doors with your name on it. Will you do what's necessary to get to that door? The caretaker, the gardener in the text says, give it one more year. There's some things the Lord showed me in this text, and, and, and I need to share them with you. They, they, they rocked me, but I believe they're going to give us strength for the way forward. The owner in the text, Bible says, he says, for three years, three years, I've been coming to this tree. It hasn't produced anything. I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and I ain't seen nothing. 
First thing I need you to understand, and God, God spoke to me, he said, he said, Brian, if you're going to be on one accord with yourself and with me, you got to realize that there are cycles hindering your progress. Now, see, I ain't going to get too many amens right here, but this thing, this thing hit me hard. God said, listen, there are cycles that are hindering your progress. He showed me in the text because he said, listen, the owner said, I've been coming to this tree for three years. Now, when you begin to understand fig trees in the ancient Near East, fig trees would oftentimes produce fruit two to three times per year. That means that the owner of this vineyard had likely been hoping to see fruit on this tree for multiple times every year that he came to the tree, but he's now come for three years and seen no fruit. And I think what he realizes is there is cycle or there are cycles that are prohibiting this tree from producing any fruit. It's time to cut it down. And this thing rocked me because God began to speak and say, Brian, what are, the, what are the cycles in your life that are prohibiting you from producing fruit? Ah, we got to ask ourselves that question. What, what, are, what are the cycles in my own life? I, I, I'll, start, I'll start small here. One of the things that the Lord spoke to me and, and one of the things that I'm working on already is the Lord showed me that I need to get up earlier. <laughs> I need to get up earlier in the morning. I, I'm, a, I'm a night owl. I like to be up at night when everything is still and quiet. But family, that don't really work when you got three small children who need to be at school at 8 a.m. <laughs> it, don't, it don't really work when, when they up at 6 o'clock ready to roll. And so the Lord showed me, Brian, I need you to get up earlier. But in order to get up earlier, that means you got to go to bed earlier. And in order to go to bed earlier, that means I I've got to eat earlier. And in order to eat earlier, that means I got to stop working earlier. In order to stop working earlier, that means I've got to put some limits on what I'm doing in my work time. And so what I realize is that when I don't do those things, I get caught up in a cycle. Cycles. Somebody, somebody type that word in the chat, cycles. And so what I'm caused to do now is to take a step back and say, God, what are the cycles in my life? Because oftentimes I'll just look at the symptom, but I won't get down to the root of the cycle. And cycles, when we get, can I go a little bit deeper? When we, when we get deeper, cycles are oftentimes caused by different triggers in our lives. That there are things that, that trigger us, that, that word is, is becoming more common in our conversation, and, and specifically when we talk about our mental and emotional health, triggers are connected to our traumas. So if we have been through a trauma in our lives, it can then lead us to have a trigger. And when that trigger kicks in, it then causes us to go back into a negative cycle. My, my cousin now who's been uh, off of, of substance abuse uh, for, for over 15 years, she, she reflects on some of the traumas that she experienced that would then be triggering for her and all of the sudden she would be back into a cycle. But unless we face our traumas, we cannot manage our triggers and we end up in unhealthy cycles. And God says this year is going to be different because I'm going to actually face my traumas, I'm going to manage my triggers, and I'm going to break some unhealthy cycles. Th this is why, family, groups like, like NA ha have been effective for so many years because that's what they've been teaching folks, how to face your traumas, manage your triggers, and break the cycles. And Jesus says, long, long before NA, long before Celebrate Recovery, I had the formula. I had the formula because I was teaching folks how to face their traumas, manage their triggers, and break their cycles. In fact, that's why I died on the cross, so that you would have the strength to face your trauma. Ah, my God, I know some folk watching right now have been through traumas in 2021, in 2020, in the last 10 years, but God 
God says this year will be different because you're going to face the trauma and you're going to manage then the triggers and you're going to break the cycle in the name of Jesus. I feel that for somebody. A cycle is going to be broken this year, but it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some trust in God if we're going to break free. Come on, somebody say break free. Break free. And so the caretaker, the caretaker, Pastor Jay, he says, give it one more year. But he don't stop there. He don't stop there. I, I got to press here. This thing bless me. It's going to bless you. He says, I'll dig around it. Woo. Woo, put your seatbelt on, y'all. Put it, put it, just snap that thing in. I'll dig around it. Because digging is my second th- point I want to lift up to you. Digging is required to get beneath the surface. Digging is required to get beneath the surface. The question is, are we willing to let Jesus do some digging in our lives? Hmm. We, we, say, we say, God, heal me. God, give me peace. God, God, get my finances in order. God, help me to lose this weight. God, save my marriage. God, save my children. God, help me to get through this season. And God says, I'm ready to help you, but can I dig? Whoo! He said, he says, I'm ready. I'm here to help you. I want to see you get the breakthrough, but will you let me dig? Can I get to the heart of your issues and allow you to see the real you, not, not, the, not the makeup, uh, the fresh uh, makeup and the cologne, uh, not, not that you. I'm talking about the, the no cologne, do-rag, ain't brush your teeth yet you. I, I'm, ta- ooh, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the, the angry and unforgiving you. I, I'm talking about the, the, the vindictive, I can hold a grudge for a month you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in the chat. I, now, I can't even see the chat, but I know it's quiet. Because, because God is saying, I, I've got to be able to do some digging that the healing might be able to take place. But will you let me dig? I, I am, I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going I'm to I'm share something about me. I am a recovering perfectionist. I'm recovering. I'm in recovery, praise God. I'm a recovering perfectionist, which, which means I can hold myself and others to an unattainable standard. And because of that, I have seen in my own life me pile different things on my plate because I really don't trust that somebody else will operate at the same level or hold themselves to the same standard that I will hold myself to. So I say, well, and this, is, Lord, this, this was the digging God was doing in my sabbatical. So I, I will say, I will say well, well, let me just do it myself because I really, I really don't know if you're going to operate on the same level that I want to operate and I hold myself to this standard, so let me do it myself, which I would then put extra weight on me. But then the Lord kept digging on me. He kept digging on me. And he said, part of then what happens is in your perfectionism, Brian, you, you will delay making certain decisions because you're looking for the perfect solution. And if it's not perfect, you'll delay. And when you delay, you increase your anxieties because now there are there are a a multitude of decisions that have not been made that you won't make because there's not a perfect answer but while you're waiting for the perfect answer it's never going to arrive and so 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 I I had to do some some digging with with my my counselor and and with my family to see what's what's at the root of of some of my own perfectionist tendencies Jesus said but can I can I dig though I don't know I don't know what it is for you I don't know what, what's going on in your life but the Lord is saying can I can I can I do a little bit of digging see I had to get a, a counselor involved and, and have some conversation with my family because I could not do all of the digging 
by myself. Woo! I know, I know some of y'all watching and y'all saying, well, you know what? As long as I got me and Jesus, I'm good. But Jesus says, I'm going to lead you to other people. I'm going to put the right people in your path where two or three are gathered in my name. I am in the midst. And so sometimes I've got to submit to a group or some wise counsel that the digging can actually take place. You see, there, there, was, there, was, there, there is actually, present tense, uh, uh, a new house being built on the street where I live. And, and, and when I saw the house being built, I, I made a note because I saw that there was more than just one person up there. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I saw it was more than it was more than just one person up there because because the kind of trucks and machinery that they had up there on the land they spoke this to me what they wanted to produce was going to determine the level of digging required mm. And so because they wanted to produce something of great significance, because they wanted to produce something large, they had to dig down deep. Ooh, somebody type that thing in right there, dig deep. They had to dig down deep. You see, family, if, if I had come up the street and I saw, I saw one dude with a shovel, I would have said, oh, oh, they ain't really building nothing right there. They, he about to plant a tree. That's what he about to do. If, if I had just saw, seen, seen one guy with a shovel, oh, he's planting a shrub. He, he's getting ready uh, to do a little bit of gardening. But when I saw all those trucks and I saw all, all these large vehicles coming down the street, I said, oh, they're getting ready to build something significant because they are planning not to just dig by themselves, but they are digging deep. Here is the question, family. Is the level of your digging commensurate with the projections of your growth? I'm going to ask it again. They're going to put it up on the screen. Is the level of your digging commensurate with the projections of your growth? This is why New Year's resolutions oftentimes struggle because they're not really resolutions. They're just saying, you know what, this is what I I, I would wish for, but I'm not digging in a way that's commensurate with what I want to see in the future. And so if what I want to see is a life that's transformed and growth that is uh, uh, sustainable, then I've got to dig on a level that's commensurate with it. Oftentimes, the depth that I dig for a new building is determined by how high I want that building to be. I can't go down one foot, two feet if I want a skyscraper. I can't go down 10 feet if I want a building that's going to last the test of winds and time. And so Jesus says, can I, can I dig? Can I, can I dig around? Because it's digging that unearths the root systems. It's digging that prepares the soil for growth. It's digging that shows whether or not this soil can support growth. Woo, listen to me now. Is it possible that God's digging can show that you're not planted in the right place? Because this soil, this soil actually ain't good for what you are called to. And so here you are in the wrong place for what I called you to. Is it possible that that God's digging can demonstrate that some of the folk around you are sucking you dry of the nutrients you need? you You heard the caretaker. The caretaker said, cut it down so it won't take up the soil. It won't use up the soil because if this tree stays, it's going to suck some of what that tree needs. My God, I feel that thing. And God says there are some folks in our lives that we got to recognize that they are sucking up some of the nutrients out of my life and I got to put some boundaries in place. Wow, that, that's, we're going to be on that thing in this One Accord series because we got to set some clear boundaries if we're going to be on One Accord with others. See, sometimes the reason I'm not on One Accord with others is because we haven't set clear boundaries. And so you're thinking we're going here, and I'm thinking we're going here, but nobody has set the boundary. God says, let me dig a little bit. Is it, is it possible, is it possible that my digging can show 
that your roots were not as deep as you thought they were. I, I'm, oh, I'm so rooted. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm strong. But then tragedy hits my life. Then I go through a major trial. And, and God is there to comfort me, but he's also there to show me my roots weren't as deep as I thought they were. There's got to be more work done. Woo. God, God, God is speaking to us through this text. He's saying this year will be different, but you got to let me dig around you. The caretaker who I, I associate with Jesus, I believe that, that the part of the parable is highlighting that the gardener or the caretaker is Jesus. He's the one who says, he says, let me dig around it. Let me, let me start digging a little bit because I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expose what's beneath the surface. Somebody type in the chat, dig, Jesus. Woo, dig. Because Jesus understands that digging leads to diagnosing, and diagnosing can lead to deliverance. It's only once I start digging that I see, oh, this is really the problem. And now that we got to the root, there's deliverance on the way. I believe, God, that somebody's going to get deliverance this year from something you have been wrestling with, something that has been holding you hostage. God said, that's not my plan for my son. That's not my plan plan for my daughter, but if you let me dig around you a little bit, woo, you'll begin to see breakthrough is on the way. Jesus says, let me, let me, let me dig, let me dig. He says, give it one more year. I'll dig around it and I will fertilize it. I fertilize it. Such a, such a beautiful phrase. I'll fertilize it. But, but when, you, when you take a step back, you realize that fertilizer is just a, a pretty way. <laughs> it's just a pretty word for manure. It's a pretty word. And so what Jesus or, or what the, the caretaker really says is, I will dung it. I'll manure it. Because fertilizer at its core is horse manure. Hear me, fam. <laughs> Point number three. God says this year, the reason why this year is going to be different is because you're going to understand that God is willing to get his hands dirty for your development. Woo! Somebody ought to praise God right there. When you and I realize that the God of the universe, the one who spoke the world into existence, says, I'm willing to get my hands dirty for you to be developed into who I have created you to be. I will put my hands in the middle of your mess. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you're going through some issues in your life, in your family, in your finances. And some of them, if we're real honest, are issues that we have caused ourselves. But God says, I love you so much that I'm going to get my hands dirty in your mess. I will fertilize the soil. I'll put my hands in the mess so that you can be who I called you to be. I need a couple folks to grab a hold of that thing and give God praise for being the kind of God who will put his hands in your mess, who will get dirty for your development, who will put his hands on things that so many others have stepped back. Oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not getting near that. But Jesus says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll manure it. Whew. Can, can, I, can I give it to you? Can I give this to you like, like God gave it to me on this piece here? Watch this thing. God says, God says, I'm going to take, I'm going to take someone else's crap and use it to make you better. <laughs> Whoa, I take a lap on that thing right there. When the Lord gave that thing to me, God, now hear this thing. He says, I'm going to take somebody else's crap, somebody else's mess, and use it to make you better. 
That's, that's, why, that's why your testimony is so important because some of the crap that you have been through, God says, I want to use that to grow somebody else. That's why I know it hurts some of the things you went through in 2020 and 2021, but God says, I need you to tell the story. And that's why we don't always need some sugar-coated, sanitized testimony. Oh, I thank God he's been good to me. He watched. No, I need you to tell me I've been through some hell. I've been through some rough stuff. My family almost died. I went through the divorce. I went through the pain, but God is with me because your mess will help to get me through to a better place. God says your struggle is actually my insulation, my God. Your, your struggle actually gives me some insulation because when you tell your story, it gives me the strength I need to make it through what I'm going through. And so Jesus says, yeah, I'm going to use your mess to bless her life, and I'm going to use his his mess to bless his life. I'm going to do a new thing in such a way that you're going to see my hands, my hands have been in the midst. Because the, the fertilizer, the fertilizer that, that, that the farmer uses, it has at least three purposes. The fertilizer, it helps to produce fruit, it helps to strengthen roots, and it helps to fight off disease. That, that's what the fertilizer does. And so Jesus is saying that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take somebody else's mess and it's actually going to help you fight off the attack of the enemy. It's going to fight off. The enemy trying to, the enemy trying to throw something on you. I, I'm just going to be 100 with you today. The enemy is after you. And God says, if I could just get you in the right circle, around the right soil, yeah. I'll take somebody else's struggle and use it to redirect you, use it to insulate you. I'll take your struggle that you don't think nobody else can grow from, and I'll use it to bless somebody. That, that's why when, when, my, when my wife was preaching up here a few months ago and she began to tell her story, her testimony of some of the things that God has taken her through in the last year, it was tough, but, but God began to set some other people free. I believe hell began to get nervous when she began to tell her story because as hard as it was and as hard as it has been in different areas, God is saying, oh, I'm breaking somebody else free. I'm breaking the chains off of somebody else because your struggle is my insulation. Your pain can point me to my purpose. God says, let me fertilize you. Let me get my hands dirty in your mess because somebody else's breakdown can lead to my breakthrough. It's going to strengthen my roots. It's going to help me produce fruit. It's going to help me fight off disease. And I may not take that detour once I hear your testimony. I may operate a different way once I hear your story. Jesus says, I'll get my hands dirty. Things, things that would scare other people off actually make me come closer. The owner of the vineyard, who I believe represents the world, he says, cut it down. But Jesus says, no, I, I wanted to come closer to me because what the world says or what those traditional folks might say or what those religious folks might say, they'll push you away. But I'm going to draw you closer because I love your brokenness. I, I love your weakness because it's in your weakness that my strength is made perfect. I love broken people. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to serve a God who loves broken people. I messed up yesterday. I'm probably going to mess up today, and I'm going to mess up tomorrow. But God says, I see your faults. I see your flaws, and I still choose you. I'm still willing to put my hands in the fertilizer and get my hands dirty. I see everything you've been through. I see every tear you've cried, every pain you've had but this year will be different this year is going to be different if you let me move in your life because I'm going to fertilize it come on somebody just type in the chat different Woo. it's going to be different this year it's going to hit different it's going to look different it's going to feel different if I trust the Lord There's strength in my weakness. There's hope in my hurts. 
there's beauty in my brokenness. Jesus says, or the caretaker says, he says, I'll dig around it. I'll fertilize it. And I'm, I'm just about done here. I got to give you one last thing. As I push, push my way to the close, this, this last thing has stopped me in my tracks. Jesus says, leave it alone for one more year. I'll dig around it. I'll fertilize it. Then he says, if it bears fruit next, next year, fine. If not, cut it down. Now, family, that, that, verse, that verse, it stopped me in my tracks, verse 9, because I thought, I thought Jesus was going to say, I'll dig around it, I'll fertilize it, and next year going to be off the chain. Woo! I, thought, I thought Jesus was going to say, next year it's going to be fruit everywhere. Next year, it's going to be fruit produced everywhere, every which way. Because once I get my hands dirty, once I dig around it, fruit is coming. But instead, Jesus says, if. Whoo. Y'all catching that thing? Jesus, who has all power in his hand, who knows the end from the beginning, he could have said, next year, oh, it's going to be popping. But Jesus says, if. And the reason why he says if, get this, I believe what he's saying is God is fighting for you and you got work to do. Y'all stay with me, stay with me. God is fighting for you. He's digging around it. He's fertilizing it. Give it one more year. But he says if, because with the divine intervention, there is still human responsibility. You see, some of us just want God to show up and do all the work. God, I'm just going to pray and I'm going to sit here. But God says, no, that's not how this thing works. God says, I'm calling you to step up into your spiritual responsibility in the earth. I've got a calling on your life. And yes, I'm going to intervene from heaven. Yes, I'm going to bring miracles, signs, and wonders. But you've still got to walk in your calling to produce the fruit that is necessary. Jesus says there is an if. And I want you to know that this year will be different, but you still got to hear Jesus saying if. Yes, God is fighting for us. Yes, he's pushing back the darkness. Yes, he's lighting up the kingdom, but we still have a spiritual responsibility to walk in our calling, to trust God with all of our hearts, to write the vision, to take new territory, to go to counseling, to write down the budget that we keep saying we're going to write down, to make time for prayer. We still have a responsibility to lay hands on the sick. We still have a responsibility to teach and to baptize. We still have a responsibility to do the work to be made whole. The pounds are not just going to fall off of you this year if you keep eating pizza and cake, but if you step up and do what God has called you to do, things will shift shift. Your money is not just all of a sudden going to be perfect, but if you make the budget and you seek God, you operate in generosity, I believe he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Your marriage is not just going to be perfect on accident, but I believe husbands, if you learn how to love your wife like Christ loved the church, I believe wives, if you learn how to respect your husbands, I believe that God will do something as you get on one accord. My God, your family relationships are not just going to be perfect. Your dating relationships are not just automatically going to fall into order, but do you wrestle with, am I equally yoked? And what is the Spirit of the Lord saying about my relationships? God says there is an if. I'm going to move in power. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. I'm doing a new thing, but you've got to Walk in your calling. You've got to take the steps necessary so that this year will be different. Rome, you can begin to just come behind me here. I feel this thing for somebody who's watching. I need you to grab a hold of this. You hear the Lord saying it, and, and it's resonating in your spirit. This year will be different. 
God is doing a new thing in this moment. He's doing a new thing right now in this moment. What he's doing is he's shifting your perspective. And, and he's, he's, I, I feel it right now on behalf of somebody. He is, he is anointing somebody for this season. He is, he is shifting your mindset and anointing you for the battle that is ahead. He is empowering you for this task, for this season, for this moment. And you're going you're gonna to write that thing down. This year will be different. Somebody's going to post that thing somewhere in your home. Somebody is actually going to make a significant resolution. Not a, not a whimsical, emotional display. But somebody's going to say, this is what I'm trusting God for this year. This year I'm going to be on one accord with him. He's going to bring me into one accord, spirit, soul, and body. And then I'm going to be able to be on one accord with my brothers and my sisters around me. This is the year. Woo. This is the year. Yeah. That I make a shift. Empowered by the grace of yeah, God. The grace of God is, is, is moving in this moment. I don't know where you are, right? Where you are in your home or, or in, in your bed, in the kitchen. I, I, I invite you just to, to pause right there. Lift up your hands and begin to declare this year will be different. Mm. God, I'm trusting you to open up the eyes of my heart. Yeah, God, I'm trusting you. We're trusting you. I'm trusting you. I hear you, Lord, speaking now. Greater discernment on your sons and on your daughters. There's wisdom that's falling even in this moment. That somebody's going to have a wisdom that's going to operate in their lives that will keep them from the, sna from the traps, from the distractions, from the snares in the name of Jesus. Somebody's going to have a fortitude. I feel the Lord God releasing a fortitude and a strength for this season. Not that there won't be any uphill battles but you're going to be strengthened. I hear you, Lord, speaking like you told us in your word to strengthen our feeble knees. I hear you when you spoke that word over Job when one of his friends came and he said, you who have strengthened so many others, now strengthen your feeble knees that you might do what God is calling you to do. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus over every man and every woman who is tuned in, locked into this moment. I pray now that you would release and anointing for this year, a different year, Lord God. I pray a different mindset. I pray a different strategy, Lord God. I pray a different understanding. I pray a different rhythm in the name of Jesus. I pray you would shift somebody's cycle, Lord God, like you're shifting, Lord God. You're shifting my, my morning routine. Shift somebody's daily cycle, Lord God. I pray you'd give somebody clear eyes this week to understand what needs to be removed from their schedule. Father, there's, there's some blocks of time. I see it in the spirit for somebody that have been places of hindrance. But God, you're going to remove it. You're going you're gonna to give them the clarity to shift that thing. That this year, will be different. We trust you to do it, Lord. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it, Lord. We receive it. And I declare, Lord God, that, that our receipt, our receipt in this moment will transfer. It will impact us tomorrow. It will impact us next week. It will impact us next month. God, they, they, I know that this ain't for everybody. Somebody is listening and knows, uh, hey, I, I'm making a, a momentary commitment, but they're not committed all the way. But there's some that are watching that are tuned in right now who are saying, I'm receiving this. And something's happening today that's going to impact my family. Something's happening today that's going to impact generations. Something's happening today that's going to impact the way I operate in the name of Jesus. Woo. I'm not going to get to the end of this year with a list of things that I didn't accomplish. I'm not going to get to the end of this year with regrets weighing me down. I'm not going to get to the end of this year 
wondering what could have been. But I'm going to trust you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maybe you're watching right now. I pray you're receiving this word, but somebody watching has never given their life to the Jesus we've been preaching about. I want you to know that the good news of the gospel is that no matter how far you've gone, no matter how short you've fallen, the grace of God is available. He's saying, give them one more year. Give her one more year to accept my love, to accept my power. This is your moment. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can accept him today. It's simple, but it's powerful. Saying, God, I admit I'm a sinner. I fall short. Today, I take myself off the throne. And I declare that Jesus is king. I give him my life. I commit to him. And today I'm saved. Not only is he your savior, my brother, my sister, but he's also your Lord, which means he directs your steps. Will you follow him today? Somebody's waiting right there in the chat. If you type the word connect, somebody will respond to you. Our prayer lines are open now, 1-800. They're open right now, 759-1970. If you call in, I declare somebody's waiting to pray with you, to support you in this moment, to walk with you in the journey. And they're going to speak over your life. This year will be different. 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 Will be different. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody say, I receive it. Begin to give God praise. We receive it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it's not too late, family. It's not too late. If you want to get connected to this church, give your life to Jesus. Maybe you just need somebody to pray with you. That number's on the screen. You can type in on the chat the word connect. And we'll respond that God might have his way in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I know some of you are resting in the presence of God. I commit you to his presence. I speak this blessing, this benediction over you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. May he smile on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can't wait to see you all next week. We love you. We're praying for you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.